All right, everybody, welcome back to another segment. So, so far, what we have done is in the last segment, we looked at the solution, we looked at the interval, we looked at the solution curves, and I showed different kind of uh, solutions. Okay, now today I'm going to switch the gears a little bit and I'm going to call this initial value problem and boundary value problems. Okay, um, so here's the thing in the previous segment, actually, I can uh, you know move over here because I have it over here. I want to ask you a question. I call this uh, general solution, right? A and B are variables or parameters. And then I said that uh, in the previous question, I gave you this as a, a is 4 and B is 0. And I said that, hey, this is called a particular solution now. I don't have any more constants in it. So my question to you, and that will be the topic of this particular segment is, well, how do I go from here to here? Right? It can be that arbitrary because I said A is equal to 4, right? Why didn't I say a is equal to 1274.12, right? It's a particular, uh, this comes from somewhere, right? And b is equal to 0. So that's what I'm going to analyze for you today, right? And let's go back and continue. Um, and actually, the approach that you go from um, the general solution to the particular solution um, is nothing different than what you've been exposed to so far, okay? And what we are going to have is we are going to need to use boundary conditions. You heard this many, many times. There's no way you graduate from undergraduate with not knowing what a boundary condition is, right? Um, but now I'm going to actually look at this. The first thing is I'm going to look at is the initial value problem. And if I have these boundary conditions, and these boundary conditions are going to be some values or mathematical numbers of the variable, is this a differential equation? It doesn't have to be just the variable itself, but it will also include its derivatives. Okay, it also includes the derivatives. At one point, that particular, this is important. At one point, I'm gonna call this IVP, initial value problem. So if I'm defining my boundary conditions at a particular point, not two points, but a singular point, I'm gonna call this IV. And if I want to express this uh, by using the different forms that we have uh, covered, and here's what you can see. This is what we had. We have f, x, y, y prime. If you remember, uh, instead of y, I put phi x, phi prime x, etc. in the previous segment. So that's still, I'm being consistent with my terminology. Um, and now, what I'm going to say is these are going to be subject to the boundary conditions, all right? And here's what the boundary conditions are going to look like. Um, so it's going to be y, x0 will be equal to some kind of a, you know, y0, let's say, right? And I'll have y prime of x0 will be equal to y1. You know, I can continue this uh, writing over here. I think you're kind of getting the point, but the most important one is the last one, right? Is it going to be yn or yn minus 1? It's going to be yn minus 1, okay? yn minus 1 of x0 will be equal to a y and subscript of n minus 1. So as you can see, if I have an nth order differential equation, um, I, I will need to have how many boundary conditions then? I will need to have the same number, okay? If the highest order derivative or the order of the differential equation is 4, then I need to have 4 boundary conditions to calculate it. Alright? And I will have to go ahead and uh, define you what y1, whether y0, y1, y2, and all the way through the yn minus 1. Note that I start with 0 and I end with n minus 1. So what is the total number? I asked that question like uh, one minute ago. Boundary condition numbers is equal to the order of the differential equation. And these are called initial conditions okay and I abbreviate this actually as IC not internal combustion but initial condition is what I have over here okay before I go ahead and talk about the boundary value problems let's solve a fairly simple example okay I'm kind of limited by what I can solve at this point because I didn't show you how to solve differential equations so let's start by this let's say y prime is equal to y and I have given you the boundary condition is y of 1 is equal to whatever, minus 5, some kind of a value, right? 
So let's go ahead and solve this uh, differential equation. Um, this is more like undergraduate level as opposed to graduate, but it'll, it'll do just fine for now. Okay. So the first step that I'm going to do in here is looking at this particular equation, this y prime. Um, I'm going to call this dy dx. Okay. And obviously this uh, x will be this, right? Okay. Um, and that will be equal to y. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this dy to the other side, right? Separation of variables is equal to dx. And if I take the integral of both sides, what I'm going to obtain is the left-hand side is going to be ln of y, natural logarithm n, will be equal to x. That's it, right? Nothing else. Yeah, that's usually something I see. Do not forget the integration constant. You do not have to write the integration constant to both sides. You can, but then if you have two integration constants, arbitrary constants in both sides of the equation, then you can combine them together and call it a C, right? So I, I, my recommendation is uh, you can even write it over here. You can read, write it over here. I just simply go ahead and write it over there, right? Okay, so can I go one more step? Um, let's actually take the e to the power of both sides, which I can. Nobody can stop me from doing that. e to the power of x plus c, right? So now, I'm actually really hoping that you do know this, but what is the e to the power of ln of y? That's going to be the y itself. So whatever that parameter is over here, you're going to get that e to the power of ln is going to cancel each other. So you're going to have y, right? Um, so then it, I'm going to get y is equal to e to the power x plus c. Then I'm going to use one more principle of the multiplication of powers, right? So it's going to be e to the power of x times e to the power of c. Right? So I'm just distributing this x plus c in terms of this. Again, very simple calculus that you already know. And what is this? e to the power of a constant is a constant, right? Another constant. And I'm going to call this, I don't know, d. So at the end of the day, I'm going to get y is equal to d e to the power of x. Then I'm kind of done with my general solution, right? I have a constant over here. Um, I have this integration constant kind of moved around a little bit, called it as d, but that's it. So now in order to solve this initial, and I have an initial condition given, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this over here. So, okay, let's write it. Initial condition, y of 1 is equal to minus 5. So then minus 5 will be equal to d times e to the 1, right? So from here you can see that I get my d to be, well, minus uh, 5 by e, right? That's what I get. So now then if I go ahead and plug that in, I'm going to get plus of minus 5 over e, e to the x. I can do one more step. I can do this. Minus 5 times e to the x times e to the minus 1, right? Divided by, uh, you know, e means e to the minus 1. So I use the same principle that I used in here. I'll go back to the same step. And you can see when, I, when it's all said and done, I'm going to get myself y is equal to minus 5 times a e to the x minus 1. So this will be my final particular solution. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and give you one more example um, that will be really coming from the engineering side of things. And this is not going to be too different, but let me write it and I'll talk in a minute, right? So, mx. So what I'm writing in here, what is this? I mean, I'm sure 100% that you've seen this many, many times. And this is only defined by, it can be defined that time is equal to zero. And it can be all the way going to the infinity, right? So that would be my... Um, interval for this particular case. So this is actually f is equal to ma, remember that? This is the, you know, displacement. The first derivative of displacement is the velocity. Second derivative of the displacement, or the first derivative of velocity, is called acceleration. So this is f is equal to ma. So I told you, you know this, right? Um, so this is basically a straight line motion of a body of mass, m. Um, which is subjected to a particular force that I give. It doesn't have to be a constant force, f of t, right? And, you know, this is the Newton's second uh, law of motion. x0 is equal to 0, as an example. It doesn't have to be. And I can give you a derivative of that. x prime of 0 is equal to v. So let's talk about a couple things over here. First thing is that, um, why do I have 2? In the previous problem, I had 1. Do you notice that? 
And I mentioned that when I was uh, going over the fundamentals. But the reason was this was a first order, right? Differential equation. So I needed to come up with one initial value. And over here, what happened is you note know that this is second order differential equation. So I needed to come up with two boundary conditions. And note these two are defined at the same point. Okay. And this in this particular case, my independent variable is the t, right? So this is t. At time is equal to zero, I'm saying the displacement is zero. So this particular mass is starting at the displacement of zero. That is my origin, right? And what is the other one? I mentioned this already, but the derivative of the displacement is the velocity. And I give an initial velocity to it. So this particular mass starts with the displacement of zero at the origin, and given with a particular velocity at the same time as well. I kind of hear this uh, sometimes. Um, students tell me that initial value needs to be associated with time only. Okay, um, That is correct. The only not correct part about it is the word only. So it's not only time. It can be also space as well. All right? um, but typically, most of the application space is associated with time. So that's something to note. Right? So it doesn't have to be time but it's typically is.